So, it should be obvious to everyone by now, and even some Brexiteers are starting to catch on. Um, last week, a Brexiteer went on to Nigel Farage's show on LBC and basically told him, you've lied to me, you've lied to hundreds of thousands of people who believed you, I can't trust you anymore. So, there will be a day, believe me, it will come sooner or later, because all things built on lies, sooner or later, crumble away, and Brexit is the biggest lie this country has ever been told. So it will not last. It is a matter of when, <coughs> uh, of when, um, you know, those shades begin to fall. And Mitch Benn uh, from the New European wrote an article just on this. So we're going to go through that today. So it was my one day off at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, every other day until the Sunday the 25th, I'll be performing my show, 10 Songs to Save the World. Go see him if you are, happen to be in Edinburgh or you are going there. Go see it. Um, go support the man. Um, it's on at the Underbelly uh, Bistro, uh, Bistro Square. <laughs> You've got to get a shameless plug-in for the guy. So, as well as popping up and doing guest spots on various late-night cabarets and improv shows. But today, there is nothing in my schedule at all. This is very much by design. One of the merry, many hazards one encounters at the Fringe is the tendency <coughs> for one's voice to start to give out after a week or so. As such, having uh, one day off from the stage can be vital if one's vocal cords are to survive until the finish line. I remember one year I foolishly accepted a gig in Glasgow on the day in question. And thus, I did not get one day off for the whole festival. By the end of the run, I was in a fair bit of pain and sounded like Tom Waits. Mindful of, mindful of, the, necessary, um, mindful of the necessity never to make uh, such a mistake again, I revolved, resolved to keep a diary, clear for today and do nothing else. <coughs> Except I didn't, because it's impossible unless I can somehow manage to cease to exist for 24 hours. There is something that keeps coming up in the ongoing Brexit shambles: the fact that it's impossible to make an entire the the uh, to make an entirely negative decision without ending up in an abs in an insult in an absolute paradox. Much of the problem with various uh, factions within the House of Commons proposing to rule out a no deal is that you can't rule out no deal without ruling something else uh, in. Basically, it's the revocation of Article 50. And since that's all that is, that's available to do now, no one can't, or rather doesn't, <coughs> or decide not to do something. What one does and what one is aware of or is not, is, is uh, to decide not to do something else. If you wake up one morning afflicted with um, exhaustion, you're lucky enough not to uh, have any commitments that day, then you might say to yourself, I'm not getting out of bed today. This is your prerogative. But when that happens, is not it is not you not getting out of bed. What happens is, is you staying in bed. If you're feeling less inert and similar and similarly unmotivated, you might get out of bed, but then decide I'm not going to leave the house today. Again, fine. But what you uh, would then do is not leave uh, is not not leave the house. What you would do is stay inside the house. When one decides against a course of action, when that happens, it is not uh, it is not the absence of the action not undertaken, but the presence of the action undertaken instead. All decisions are positive, even if we frame them in negative terms. All the decisions that allow is possible to follow upon, that is all. This leads us inevitably back to Brexit. And the great and fearless uh, Femi, uh, Femi Otwell has been uh, ponder, uh, pointing out for months now, uh, one of the reasons uh, that there hasn't been and can't even be a consensus on what Brexit means is that the sole reason that Brexit is being pursued, the 26th referendum, was expressed in terms so hopelessly vague as to make a consensus impossible. And we've talked about this before on the channel. Leave ran such a vague campaign that anything could mean leave. You know, many people voted because they wanted to remain uh, in the single market in the customs union so, you know leavers you know um 
oh, I can't remember his name now, Daniel Hanan famously said on TV, only a fool is talking about leaving the single market. And yet, he, he has gone on to make the point he wants to leave the single market, as does Boris Johnson. So who is the fool? It's certainly, it's certainly his him, I'll tell you that now. But a narrow majority voted to, quote, leave the European Union, but literally dozens of possible scenarios would satisfy that demand, from Norway plus to the including the floating mines out into the channel and declaring war on France. Even if it uh, uh, even as it seems to have been decided upon, the only options of the victorious 52% are to be considered, such as a bewildering variety of interpretations and aspirations within that 52% that talk of the, quote, will of the majority is dishonest. But the problem is even deeper than that. The question the referendum was posed in the, in the quote, in the, in, the epidemiolo in the epidemiologist terms, was meaningless, being essentially a binary choice between keep on doing a thing, the thing in being questioned is maintaining our membership of the EU, and stop doing a thing. The narrow win for the latter, op uh, the na the, the latter opinion has put us in an untenable position of having made a negative decision. We choose to stop doing something without settling on or even, or even addressing what we were going to do instead. The reason the Brexit decision hasn't been acted upon is because it can't be acted upon, at least not honestly. One has to pretend that it was something entirely other than what it was and what precisely the lie which our unelected lying Prime Minister and their cadre of professional liars has assembled to amplify his lies are telling you right now. That they, uh, that they always said that no deal was the most probable, uh, probable outcome. It was, but they all insisted it was impossible. And that the 52% were made aware of this ahead of the vote. Uh, they were, but only our side... And they were, uh, they were uh, told to dismiss this as Project Fear. Unlike our unelected lying Prime Minister, I don't believe that the British people are too stupid ever to see this through. Um, the only way, or, well, the only way, or one way or another, is a reckoning is coming, and in the next few months. Keep making the case, keep, f keep flagging up the lies, keep having the argument, be the pain in the Brexit movement's online, online collective ass. Brexit will fail as all things built on lies must, but it's just the question of when and how much damage it is done uh, and how much damage damage it does. And that's what we've been saying, um, really, continuing on this point, since, you know, 2016. We were telling you this was probably what was going to happen. Now, Leave was saying, oh, we're going to do all these different um, deals. They were even saying that we will not trigger Article 50 until we get a deal. And yet here we are, Article 50 triggered because the ERG were threatening to walk over to UKIP if May didn't immediately trigger Article 50. <laughs> you know, um, everything here is the Brexiteers' fault. They cannot come up with any alternative um, arrangements for Northern Ireland because they haven't thought of any alternative arrangements on Northern Ireland. They just somehow assumed that they would leave the European Union and that the Irish border was not going to be a problem. <laughs> their, their insistence is now, even today, um, on the Sunday morning shows, this very morning, they were making the case that somehow the Irish border is a complete red herring, that it's somehow not a problem. And yet, here we are, um, and we've already had terrorist threats from the IRA when people like Nigel Farage and all these other Brexiteers were saying that the IRA is dead and it's just something in the past. It's something that's not going to happen. And yet we've already had um, police officers in the Republic, um, in sorry, not in the Republic, in Northern Ireland, uh, attacked, um, plotted to be attacked on. We've had a journalist being killed and a bomb gone off. Uh, this is just the start, because it won't be long, just like, you know, when the IRA was at its height, those bombs will sooner or later come over into the UK, and ultimately will kill people. 
Um, and, you know, this is the Brexiteers' fault because during the referendum, they said it themselves, Ireland is not going to be a problem. <laughs> and even in Boris Johnson's letter to Donald Tusk, Johnson makes the, uh, the bold claim that somehow, for some ungodly reason, even though the Republic of Ireland has nothing to do with this Brexit mess, is that for some reason, Ireland should also leave the European Union and Customs Union. <laughs> this is... <sighs> and not only that, but you have this un ridiculous, I insane reason of the backstop. You know, the, the EU has said, look, the backstop is only going to be in place until... Uh, until, in their words only, a alternative situation can be found. This will be a trade deal, or it'll be us remaining in the customs union or single market. One of those two things, you know. <laughs> but until those arrangements can be found, there must be a solution to the problem. And that solution is the backstop. And even, once again, in that letter, Boris Johnson essentially goes on to say he wants a backstop to the backstop. <laughs> you know, you literally cannot make this up. Um, but this is the situation that we are in. This is how ridiculous the situation we have. We have a guy who did not vote um, for the backstop the first couple times around and then voted for it. And now he's saying that he doesn't want the backstop, but he wants this different kind of backstop, which is exactly the same as the backstop he uh, vote, both voted against and for. You literally cannot make this up. This would be a hilarious comedy if it wasn't happening to our country. But it is. And many Europeans, rightly so, are just laughing at the situation that we are in. And I can't blame them. Um, you know, but that's the situation we're in. <laughs>